In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a skier problem where a skier goes down a slope off of an edge and then lands on the ground and we're going to find its landing position, its final delta x value. So this is going to be a two part problem. We're first going to solve for the velocity of the skier off of the edge. And then we're going to treat that like an energy problem. And then for the second half of the problem, we're going to treat it like a projectile problem. And we're going to put all those ideas together to find our final delta x. Now, first of all, when the skier is at the top of a 10 meter hill, they have a lot of gravitational potential energy. And we'll assume that they start from rust so that they have no kinetic energy at the very top. Now, as they lose height, they lose gravitational potential energy because it's all converted into kinetic energy eventually. Now, when you're looking at a curved slope, especially, it's best to analyze it in terms of energy because the forces can get very complicated in figuring out how it accelerates to a certain velocity. So because of the conservation of energy, we're going to assume that the gravitational potential energy is completely transformed into kinetic energy from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill, which would mean that the formula mgh equals one half mv squared. Now it turns out that the mass is actually insignificant and the masses drop out on each side. So if we plug in all our values, we can go ahead and solve for that velocity. After we set those two formulas equal each other, we had 9.8 times 10 equals 1 half V squared. And 9.8 times 10 is 98 times 2 is 196. We multiplied it by 2 to cancel out this 1 half. And then we square rooted both sides, which gave us a velocity of 14 meters per second. So now we're done analyzing the skier on the hill. Now that they're at the bottom of the hill, we know that their velocity is 14 meters per second. And it turns into a projectile motion question. Now with all projectile motion questions, we always wanna set up an X and Y column for everything that's going horizontally and everything that's going vertically. The reason we do that is because all of the motion in the horizontal direction is constant velocity, CV for constant velocity, because there's no forces acting to the left or right as soon as the skier leaves the edge of the hill. But there is the force of gravity pulling vertically, pulling straight down towards the center of the earth, so all of this motion is accelerated. So we want to make sure we place all of the variables in the X or Y column, depending on the way that they're directed. So the 14 meters per second is directed sideways. So we can put that over here. And the acceleration is directed vertically, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can put that there. Another thing that we can put in this column is the VI equals zero meters per second. Now, although the person is not at rest here, they're not moving upwards or downwards right at the edge of the hill. So we can say that their vertical velocity is zero, although their horizontal velocity is 14. Now, since we're looking for a delta x, we would say delta x over t equals v. And we know that the v is 14. So we can slide that into there. So as long as we can find a time, then we can use some algebra to find our delta x and we have our final answer. So on this side over here, um, it turns out that we do have enough information. If we add one more thing, we have an additional number right here, five meters. So we can say that the delta y is negative five because this skier drops five meters in height. Now we can use one of our accelerated motion formulas, which is delta y equals vit plus one half at squared. And then we can go ahead and drop the whole front half because the VI is zero. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers and see what we get for time.
We now got our time of 1.01 seconds, which you can slide over to our left hand column because the time does not have a direction. It could be used in either column. So then we can say that delta x over 1.01 .01 equals 14. And then we can cross multiply the 1.01 .01 over to the other side. And then that gives us our final delta x value, our delta x value equals 14.14 meters. So to sum things up, if you have a skier on a slope, it is usually the easiest method to analyze it in terms of energy. And if we have all the gravitational potential energy converted into kinetic energy from the top of the hill to the bottom, your masses cancel out. Cancel out. Um, then you can solve for the velocity. Our velocity came out to 14, which gave us our horizontal velocity to start us off for the second half of the problem. That goes into our x column. We separate things into our x and y column based on their direction. From there, we typically have values such as negative 9.8 for the acceleration. If it's a horizontal launch off an edge, we will not have any velocity in the vertical direction. And for this one, we had the distance that the object fell vertically, which allowed us to find our time that we slid over to our x formula, delta x over t equals v, and then we're able to solve for that delta x to see where they landed. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.